To learn more about earning college credits with Study Hall, go to gostudyhall.com or click the link in the description. Let's say you're the mayor of your town and many of the residents constantly complain about transportation, specifically the lack of roads leading to that mouth-wateringly delicious pizza place on the edge of town. It seems simple, right? Just place in a new road and watch as everyone orders their favorite slice of cheese, pepperoni, and for that one genius who I completely agree with, Pineapple. But it's not always that easy. Maybe the reason the road hasn't been built is because it would cut right through a nature preserve that's also the habitat of an endangered grizzly bear population. As the mayor, you have to balance the present needs of your residents with the long-term benefits of protecting those endangered animals. Thankfully, you're not alone. When faced with complex, scary problems like this, there is only one person you can call. Nope. Not the Ghostbusters, you need a civil engineer. Hi, I'm Sabrina Cruz and welcome to Fast Guides, a study hall series that explores different college majors. Now, let's talk about civil engineering degrees. Before diving into civil engineering and all the fabulous things around town that we have to thank for it, we probably should make sure that we're on the same page about what the words civil and engineering actually mean. Civil means anything related to the citizens of a community. That could be a town, a state, a country, any type of community organized around a shared government. And engineering is a specific field that applies math and science to solve problems ranging from dishwashing to launching a satellite. So civil engineering combines these two ideas, blending math, science, and engineering Ingenuity, civil engineers solve problems and design structures that people use every day. Put more simply, civil engineering is literally what cities are built on and made of. Yes, you need a government and laws for a city to function properly, but you also need all of the buildings, roads, airports, parks, sewage lines, and more. All these tangible things are part of infrastructure or the physical structures and systems we need for a society to exist. And infrastructure can last a long time. Like Rome's ancient sewer system wasn't built in a day, but it's still around thousands thousands of days later, draining water from the city. Civil engineers literally change the landscape of the world around us. They think about how to make life better for people now through safe buildings, efficient transportation, and access to clean water. The structures they build become part of the environment, potentially for generations. So civil engineers also have a huge responsibility to future people and the future planet. That's why civil engineers often have to come up with sustainable solutions to complex engineering problems. Sustainable solutions balance these short-term needs of a community with what it will need to continue long term. That could mean designing buildings that reduce greenhouse gas emissions, minimizing the impact of construction on local ecosystems, or proposing cleaner, safer modes of transportation like running city buses on electricity supported by solar power instead of fossil fuels. Basically, civil engineering is like juggling two or three Rubik's cubes and solving them in midair. Rubik's cubes that are going to be part of a massive bridge over a river connecting two cities that thousands of people are going to use to commute every day. I can't even juggle. Don't worry though, you don't actually need to know how to juggle to be a civil engineer. What you will need is a pretty sophisticated knowledge of math and science. And loving Legos, while not required, is definitely a bonus. Along with those math classes, you'll learn about physics and mechanics, which might involve lab courses to understand how buildings behave and respond to stress, because apparently there isn't a meditation class for skyscrapers. You'll also take courses in material science, which you shouldn't take for granted, since they cover the properties of various materials used on the job, like concrete, steel, and asphalt. With that foundation in place, you're ready to start applying that knowledge in a few specialized engineering classes, like structural engineering, engineering, where you'll learn how to design things like bridges, buildings, and dams. You might also take transportation engineering, which teaches you how to design things like highways, railroads, and airports, or environmental engineering, which covers the best ways to design and operate structures so that they are environmentally responsible and control pollution. You can also take specialized classes that focus on the unique problems facing individual communities. Like if you're interested in how climate change might affect coastal communities, you might take courses related to coastal engineering that cover how to build on sand, develop solutions to flooding, and protect coastal habitats. There are even courses you can take as a civil engineering student about designing for structures and launch pads in space. Since every community has its own unique needs, the list of specialties goes on and on. But in general, a civil engineering degree teaches you how to design, build, and maintain a variety of structures around us, which prepares you for a wide range of careers in the field. As you get further along in your civil engineering degree, you'll have more choices in what electives you can take. That means there's really something for everybody, but there are quite a few math courses and calculations involved. So with all of those numbers, it helps if you're someone who enjoys math and science. Like, 
really enjoys it. Like Bakes a Pie every March 14th enjoys it. You'll be using complex formulas and rules every single day. So if you don't like solving for X, you might find that this field isn't the right fit for YOU. But in civil engineering, creativity still counts. It takes innovation to design safe roads, get citizens their pizza, and protect those grizzly bears. So if creatively solving problems makes your eyes light up, civil engineering might be for you. Maybe you like designing Lego cities or playing with Lincoln logs. Civil engineering is like that, but on a much larger scale. And civil engineering is a public service. That means your work will be for the betterment of the people living around you. Maybe that's providing a clean drinking water system to a community that desperately needs it. Maybe that's designing a transportation system that lets folks without a car travel to work. Maybe it's developing climate-friendly buildings that keep the town and planet healthy. As a civil engineer, you have the chance to provide real services that make citizens' lives easier and are sustainable for the people coming after you. So if you're interested in the public good now and in the future, you might thrive as a civil engineer. Still, even if you're a number-loving creative thinker, all that math and science can definitely be a challenge. There's also quite a bit of responsibility that comes with being a civil engineer. Think about it. The purpose is to make structures for citizens to use. That means thousands, maybe millions of people will use your creations every single day. Being wrong by even the tiniest fraction can have massive consequences for people that rely on those structures. Like in 2018, a footbridge in Florida collapsed while still being built, killing six people due to calculation mistakes in its design. So. Yeah, in civil engineering, there's no room for error. There's also lots of training to become a civil engineer because the stakes are so high. That means the process of becoming a civil engineer is a long one. For example, after you graduate with a civil engineering degree, you can't just go out and start signing off on the construction of the Brooklyn Bridge. First, you have to sit for the Fundamentals of Engineering exam. As of 2023, it's a six hour, 110 question test that covers math, physics, and engineering concepts you probably studied as an undergrad. You can't take that test until you've graduated with an accredited engineering degree or you're in your final year of one. Then, in most states, you have to complete four years as an engineer in training, usually studying under another civil engineer or team of engineers. And then you must pass the Principles of Engineering exam, an 80-question test that lasts eight hours. Only then, with a professional engineer license, can you begin designing and signing off on building projects. But if while in school you find civil engineering isn't for you, a math, physics, or geology major may also be a good fit. If you're only interested in buildings, you might prefer an architecture major, or you could learn about preserving natural resources with a sustainability major. You might even thrive in a different engineering field, like industrial or biological engineering. But say you do decide civil engineering is for you. Now that you've passed that last exam and put in the patience and hard work, you're all ready to get out in the world, design some buildings, and make some money. But there are a few things to know before you set out in the real world. Like in general, salaries are hard to talk about because so much can change from year to year or place to place, and a civil engineer's salary depends on a few different factors. First, the field you work in matters. You could work for local governments or government agencies, where as of 2021, civil engineers make, on average, around $89,000 or $99,000. Or maybe you work for an architectural consulting firm that provides input on building projects. In this kind of work, civil engineers make an average of $97,000. You could even work for a commercial construction firm that oversees the actual building of non-residential structures you help design, where you could make $97,000. Second, your salary also depends on which field of civil engineering you go into. There are lots of different, really specific corners of civil engineering to focus on. Civil engineers who work primarily on highway and road construction make around $87,000 per year. But maybe your specialty is in constructing pipelines for natural gas. In that case, you could earn around $93,000. Another consideration is the type of work you'll actually be doing at your job. Civil engineers are often highly involved in these building projects, so you can expect to work in both an office and on sites, giving engineers the chance to work with their hands. And since civil engineers must design with a future in mind, they may be on the cutting edge of many technological changes. For instance, as self-driving cars hit the streets, civil engineers will have to continue designing and adapting roads to accommodate them. Also, as electric vehicles become more popular, civil engineers will have to design creative ways to add charging stations in cities. The future may also involve developing creative solutions in the field of geotechnical 
technical engineering. That's a subfield of civil engineering that focuses on how natural resources behave within and alongside structures. That means solving problems related to those natural resources, like stabilizing soil so that they're safer to build on, or cleaning up water sources that have been contaminated. Basically, the work of a civil engineer is about the future as much as it is the present, and many of the jobs civil engineers will have don't even exist yet, but the goal will be the same looking out for a community's needs in the present and beyond. So, with great power comes great responsibility, and civil engineers have a hands-on role to play in making communities safer and better places to live. Whether that's designing a community park for the local soccer team to practice, or making sure everyone in town has access to clean drinking water. Civil engineers are on the front line solving some of our toughest challenges, even building a road that gets everyone pizza and saves the grizzlies. If you ask me, that's like juggling 10 of these at once. If you want to investigate more degrees before you choose your major, check out our other videos in this playlist. To find out how to earn a college credit with Study Hall, go to gostudyhall.com or click the link here or in the description. And if you want to help us out, give this video a like and comment to let us know how you chose your degree or what you wish you'd known before starting. Thanks for watching.